Hey, hey, what's up, YouTube? Yo, so, bruh, we get into five reactions of innocent convicts. That, bruh, this has always been one of my fears, bruh, especially as a black man, y'all. Like, like I, I would hate to be the wrong convict of anything, y'all. Like, 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 I think I, there was a documentary that came on Netflix, and it just had me thinking, like, like imagine spending 30, 40 years in prison, bruh. Com and you completely innocent and you've been fighting for your f freedom for all this time and then they let you out right and then what 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 bro you can't give me bro one thing the most about most valuable thing on this planet to me is time you took all my time away no bro <laughs> let me bro, i'm going too deep bro i'm going too deep anyway let's let's dive into the video yeah started in 2004 when the Honduran immigrant was accused of killing two women, a man who was sentenced to die literally was on death row. So it's the case of this guy named Clemente Aguirre. And if I tell you this story, you'll say, you gotta be making the mm. up. Mm. 14 years. 14. Four months. In 19 days. And then incarcerated. Mm. And just three months of them in death row. On June 25th, 2004, in Altamonte, Florida, 24-year-old Clemente was indicted on charges of first-degree murder and burglary, a crime that he did not commit. From the start, Aguirre Harkin said he found the women dead, that he tried to help, and that's how their blood got on his clothes and his footprints. It was a... oh. I ain't gonna lie, y'all. I ain't gonna lie. Yo, yeah. That's a tricky situation. That's a tricky situation, y'all. Like, come on now. It, it, come on now. Dang. And I know the dude that, that did it was just sitting back. Or oh, a oh, oh woman who did it was just sitting back. Oh, just smiling at your... It's a gruesome crime that found his neighbors, 68-year-old Carol Barrett. Oh, they were all the book. Oh, why she looking like that? Oh, my God. The camera? 67 year old Cheryl Williams. Stabbed to death. However, despite Clemente protect I'm sorry, there's not enough emotion for me. There's, there's not a, like if you didn't kill, I would, but I would have been on my hands and knees begging. Like he, I hate you. Know, come on, bro. You got, you got. Come on. Testing his innocence, police decided he was the only possible suspect, and he was sentenced to death. In the 14 years on death row. Clemente never stopped trying to clear his name, and he wasn't wrong either. Mm. As it turns out, Samantha, Cheryl's daughter, prior to the murder, was diagnosed with intermittent explosive disorder, but in inches of- What the fuck is that? What? Wait, what? What is that? Intermittent explosive disorder, but in inches of the mother's body yeah and in the bathroom where the state argued the killer cleaned up is the daughter's blood a trail of the daughter's blood going to the bathroom mm. and then the mother's blood on the outside of the daughter's window and there's in the doctor's notes a few years before this happened where she says to her mother i'm gonna kill you if i ever get out of here i'll kill all of you then we find out that she has confessed all over town we had people coming in all over the place testifying affidavits that she said i killed my mother and my grandmother i'll do it to you with such irrefutable evidence it... and he was fighting for his life this long <sighs> kate and cheryl's daughter the day finally arrived for clemente i didn't know they nobody believed me that the you know besides my mother nobody believed me and i thank you for it I'm sorry, yo. I am so sorry, bro. I couldn't, bro. I couldn't. I know. I know. I'm free. Thank you. But yo, I can't. I'm not thanking you, son. I'm. But I've been telling you this whole time, bro. Keep digging. Keep digging, bro. Hey, I don't care if you gotta go back to the scene every day, every night. But no, there's no way this man. Should, her tears and immediately heads towards friends and family to celebrate. But today is a, a brighter day, a new day, and I got good hopes for the future. 
God bless this man. This is Devontae Sanford, who in 2007 was sentenced to 37 to 90 years in prison. A horrific quadruple murder that he did not commit. He was only 14 years old at the time. 14? Devontae was walking outside his home in his pajamas when he was arrested. Just Hold up, y'all. Uh, 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 no, uh, my fault, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> my fault, my fault. But it's interesting, though. It's interesting. Hold up, hold up. Ugh. Crime scene involving four people and an AK-47 assault rifle. Damn. Devontae was taken to the local police station, where it turns out that the police coerced him into a false confession. With the... Brother. About that show, bro. About that show that I was talking about on Netflix, bro. The police did the same shit to these boys, y'all. Bro, I, bro. If I find a name, I'm gonna add the clip, y'all. I'm gonna add like the picture, bro. bro like, bro. This is sickening, bro. This is use of leading questions and feeding new facts from the case. To make matters worse, his lawyer at the time didn't help by convincing him to enter a guilty plea. His current lawyer had this to say. In the course of their targeting him, they literally fabricated evidence and committed perjury in order to ensure that this young man, uh, that they could get a conviction. But just three weeks later, there was another twist in this tale. And that twist came in the form of hitman Vincent Smothers. Smothers was arrested for 12 murders four of which turned out to be the case that Sanford was convicted for. The lack of action from the Justice Corps got the attention of the Northwestern Center of Wrongfully Convicted Youths, who pushed to reopen the case, which led to DeMonte's freedom in 2016. It was a homecoming nine years in the making. <laughs> Interestingly enough, DeMonte is thankful to one... Bro, the police gotta do better, y'all. Yeah. Y'all taking innocent folks from their family, y'all. Taking innocent people from their family, bro. Y'all, bro, we got to do better. Guys to do mother, bro. Like, and, and then they, then they convinced this 14 year old boy, y'all. Not, I'm a, a, a boy, not a man, a boy. One particular person for his freedom. Smothers. He protected me. Not the cop. The cops took advantage of me, just because of this man, you know, I'm able to walk in the brain and just, you know, be at peace. As it turns out, all that time spent wrongfully incarcerated may have taken its toll on Sanford, who found it hard acclimatizing back into regular society. New and serious trouble for Devante Sanford, the 25-year-old, was convicted of murder here in Detroit, then exonerated and released from prison. He was arrested for assault in 2018, and this time, there was no hitman to take the heat. In 1991, Queens, New York, 19-year-old Gregory Counts and 21-year-old Van Dyke Perry were sentenced to life in prison for a crime they did not commit. The victim was held on knife point out front of her Queens home. Yo, 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 this is, this is the, um, this the, um, Netflix documentary, this was, this what it was about, y'all, this was about, oh my god. The last one sounded familiar too. The last one sounded familiar too. Mmm. 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 Bro, this is sickening. Turned into a car and driven to Central Park, where she was then raped multiple times. She claimed that the men responsible were Counts, Perry, and a third unknown man. In 2017, after having already served 11 years, the Innocence Project reinvestigated the Counts and Perry case using DNA that was retested. DNA cleared both Counts and Perry from the scene found on the victim. It led to a man who was deceased. Weird, right? Yeah. So why would the victim make up such a heinous story and send two innocent men to jail? The answer would get your blood boiling. The complainant now admits that her boyfriend forced her to lie and falsely claimed these men sexually assaulted her. Her boyfriend was trying to avoid having to pay a debt to these two men. All that. My heart feel weird, y'all. Like, 
what did it, what what did they do to this man? Like 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 what did the police do to this man that that blamed these these two innocent men, y'all? Um, cause I'm let me shut up. <laughs> to avoid from avoiding debt, the things we do for money. Let's have a look as both Counts and Perry sit in court, hearing the sweet sound of freedom echoing throughout. They do their best to hold back their emotions. Although they are free and reintegrating back into society now, it's clear that this horrible, unjust story will haunt both these men for the rest of their lives. It's never going to be over. The reason why, because it tormented my life and it's my past. Exactly. Like, this shit is fucking sick, bruh. This is sick, y'all. This shit is sick. Man, this is fucking sick, bruh. Like, this is, like, we got to do better. Please. 23 in New Jersey. 22-year-old Tito Marino was murdered in his video store. Another gruesome death by stabbing. Damn. Harry Kelly and Ralph Lee were both convicted of a crime they had no connection to. The whole story was put together by police using coercion and a sketchy eyewitness. They then used those statements against Lee, and that's how they nailed their conviction. It wasn't until once again, the Innocence Projects got involved in their case, that Eric and Ralph felt a bit of hope. And the state has just dug in their heels ever since. They refused to investigate this other person, refused to talk to him, mm. didn't look into his history, and instead are just, um, you know, blindly clinging to this conviction at all costs. Lee was released after 11 years. However, it was... I... Shut up. Like, yo. This is crazy to me, y'all. Like, um... What are we doing as as a society to let these things go on bruh and we can't just we can't go by the word of mouth but we need just how does like good cops is bad cause how does good people there's bad people y'all and but we need our good people bruh because i can't even imagine being good my whole life bruh doing do, playing the body book bruh and then some like just happened like what's the point like at that point what's the point Spent 30, 40 years of my life in prison, but somebody didn't do. Y'all, this is this is sick. This is sick, y'all. Um, like I said, we got to do better. Um, oh yeah, one one more thing. Do y'all feel like like we could be in the right place at the wrong time? Like, do do y'all believe in that? I, I look key. I, I look uh or maybe it's like godly time like you post like you like you supposed to be the the learning lesson but I don't know I don't know y'all tell me y'all tell me 2018 after having spent 24 years in prison the Kelly was finally given back his freedom after new DNA evidence was presented to the judge in court therefore the life is a Interestingly enough, we find Judge Joseph Portelli in full Karen mode. What the fuck? What the fuck you mean? What are you talking about? I just spent 24 years of my life. So for something I didn't do, talking about it ain't something to, to apply. Bitch, you get locked up, then you... F boy? The f wrong with this boy? I'm not sure about you, but freedom after 24 years of wrongful incarceration... Talk to me! Seems like a pretty good reason to celebrate. Oh, my mama! Bitch ass nigga. What's wrong with this boy? He only really didn't write this down from their moves. Both were hungry, nah. and spirits, and fat. He need to get fired. Like, the fuck you mean this ain't no time to apply? You get locked up for 24 years. The fuck wrong with this and man? For everyone that had played a part in their release. Things y'all want to eat. <laughs> I'm a little hungry. Um, be with my legal team. I want to thank them. I want to thank my family. Um, first and foremost, um, 
It's been a long time. Um, I just don't know. I'm just out of everything. I'm just feeling good right Happy now. That's you, what would you want someone who didn't know anything about your case to know? I'm innocent man. I'm innocent man. All's well that ends well. For now. In the case of People versus Juan Ignacio Catalan, is that your true name? Yes, this is Juan Catalan, the man saved by sitcom. An alibi caught on camera, but not in the way you think. Mm. On May 13th, 2003, 16-year-old Martha Puebla, a witness in a case of a gang slaying, was shot and killed in front of her home in Sun Valley, California. Damn. It wasn't until three months later that the FBI arrested 24-year-old Juan Catalan mm. for a raid in front of his family's machine shop. Juan was interrogated for hours. It seemed like they already had a huge amount of evidence against him. A witness sketch that looks like you. A witness that was supposed to take the stand against your brother gets murdered in cold blood. It doesn't look good. I ain't gonna lie. But Juan consistently pleads his innocence, mm. telling officers that they're trying to pin this crime on the wrong person. As things get sticky, Juan remembered that he was in a Dodgers game with his daughter on that day. Mm. In a stadium full of tens of thousands of people, what are the chances that someone captured him there? And even more so, the chances that you'd be able to retrieve said footage. Yeah. And this is where this case becomes well. Juan remembered he was on TV, but not the Dodgers cam. It just so happened that Larry David, the creator of Seinfeld and star of the HBO show Curb Your Enthusiasm, was shooting an episode in the exact same aisle as Catalan and his daughter. Yo, if that ain't God, y'all. If that's not God, I don't know what it is, y'all. Like I said, bro, this how this is right. This this right place, wrong time. This right place, right time. You feel me? Oh my, <laughs> bro, come on, bro. This is what I like to hear. I picked up a hooker in the carpool lane and took her to Dodger Stadium. What are the chances? Juan's lawyer contacted HBO, got access to the footage of that episode, yes, sir. and the tapes. Yes, sir. Hours of research brought no results, and he was running out of tape and felt like he wasn't going to get what he needed. And then, there it was, the once-in-a-lifetime chance of an alibi caught on tape. And I pointed at the screen, and I said, that's him, that's him, roll that back. This footage, combined with a phone call made to his girlfriend at the exact time he was leaving the stadium, led to his case being thrown out. I love it. I love it. Talk to me. Talk to me. Yes. Yes. We'd love to see this. Man, this is beautiful. Both detectives were found guilty of coercion and falsifying their reports. Yes, niggas. Juan, what can you say? Talk about being in the right place. At the right time. <laughs> oh, I told you! The Stop it! Uh, to being caught on camera. Man, what come on! Out of, you know, 56, 58, Boy, y'all, this is beautiful, man. Boy, it was pissing me off, bro, bro in the beginning, y'all. This was a beautiful fucking story. Man, y'all like my reaction, man. Hit the subscribe, like button, the post notification, man. Shit, man. Man, I'm out of here, y'all. Man, thank you.